all this, all this, the upper part, side down here, bottom down here, that's all interior. These pieces protruding out, I'm going to have these partially in sunlight. We'll have some sunlight across the end and, and something casting a shadow across that. So these guys here will be are outside that space and catching sunlight. Same with this, although I may throw this completely in shadow. We'll see how we go with that. I don't want to overcomplicate and get too much light. There's enough light here to throw this in shadow and leave that there, but it's outside our main, sh our main interior shape. Let's see if we can't get the correct approximate value. Let's darken that up considerably and dark side. easier to do it this way I've got some really nice interesting warm cool mixes going on here I know this is upside down but it will all make sense All of this up here, what's going to happen? We're going to have sunlight hitting these beams, these structures protruding from the main structure, and they're going to bounce light back up under here. That's why all this bottom area here is at the, so far cool, and this is warm. That's warm light. Light is going to hit, or sunlight is going to come down from here, hit this, hit this, and bounce back up into our space. So that's why I've got a bit of a transition between warm up here and I start to transition into cools. We'll see how that goes in context with that. Some of those upper surfaces a little bit in the darker, this back dark area. Because as we get further and further away from the, the outside ambient light, a lot of the dark areas in here, and as they get, as these surfaces get closer and closer to you, start picking up more of the, more warmth. We were looking at our interior space in shadow. Like I said to you about gouache, once it dries, once you, these dark colors, particularly um, or dark darker colors in gouache, tend to dry lighter because it's a matte surface. It dries to a very strong matte, there's, which means there's no gloss, there's no shine, there's no sheen on the paint itself. I can possibly demonstrate that by lifting that up here, and you'll see that there's no gloss or shine off that. So naturally darker colors will dry lighter unlike an oil paint glossy oil paints will dry appear darker and richer gouache doesn't do that at least particularly the uh, winter and newton gouache doesn't do that because of its uh, matte surface drying quality which is great for reproduction so if you want to scan this or photograph this you're not going to get light glare from your painting so it's great for scanning great for photography um, but it's not so great for you know your blacks looking particularly black or dark and again it's difficult to actually judge this correctly on the palette because I'm not looking directly over the top of it well that wasn't too bad was it you can just about see it dry before your eyes let me put that right next to that pure black start to throw in some random warm passages I'll zoom in on this stuff down here, this area, and work on this sort of dark area, and you'll get a you'll get an idea of how how interesting it gets. A lot of the overlapping in overlapping colors, warm, cool relationships that are going on. 
I will at some point, I, I'm not sure if I, did I mention this earlier, that I will do a version of this as an oil painting study. And you'll get to see a vastly different approach <laughs> to how I paint with oil paints. It's a lot of fun. Oil painting is easy. I think oil painting is easier than gouache, to be honest. You've got so much freedom, so much time on your hands to blend and to smooth areas out and to, to soften edges. You've got so much flexibility. It's amazing. It's a beautiful medium to, to paint with. If you haven't painted with oils, I encourage you to get into it. It's great. Okay, now let's do that test again. There's our pure black. I think this was the, I think that was, well, that was the value that we put in there. So let's, so let's overlap that and see what we get. Okay, I'm close in on this area here. You can see some of that variation in the paint there. From the original earlier value, the lighter values, come back over with some of the darker cool values, and then some of that rusty red. Let's see if we can get really close. How close can we get? There we go. That's pretty close. It's been weathered. Just want to up the apparent value. Okay, so that, that color in here, that color temperature, that's the shadow side. This is a lot of warmth hitting this object, the other side of that object, and bouncing back into that. Okay, so our reflected light into here, it's slightly up in value against the shadow, but against this it's working okay. It's, it's maintaining its value. And that value has to stand out against the shadow. Get our little dudes in there. 